Hey everyone, in the news this week, more whinging and whining at Prince Harry's court case with talk about what damages he should receive. A friend of mine suggested he should have his nose damaged, his legs damaged, and even offered to do it personally around the back of the High Court. Madonna was gravely ill this week and is apparently, quote, vomiting uncontrollably, which I assume is a synonym for saying that she's working on a new album. And the civil unrest situation in France has been getting worse, although the media has been complicit in playing down the violence. In one night alone, there were 2,000 cars burned, 500 buildings damaged, over 800 people arrested, and nearly 250 police officers injured. The public library in Marseille was burnt to the ground, and the country's on the verge of total anarchy, with calls for the army to intervene. And so President Macron's response has been to ask Snapchat, TikTok, and Twitter to censor everything so nobody realises quite how bad things are. It's been a bad year for France, really. This all coming not long after the bloodbath of last year's World Cup final, where Argentina defended like it was 1982, but France defended like it was 1940. But for a true demonstration of a situation going from bad to worse, we have to look further east, where Russia seemed like it was going to go for a full-scale military coup, or as Vladimir Putin would have called it, a quote, special military disagreement. For a few days, it genuinely looked like the government could be overthrown, possibly leading to the disintegration of the country as a single state. This was after the Wagner mercenary group marched in Moscow after months of disagreement. For those not following things closely, Russia is officially just maintaining peaceful operations in parts of Ukraine that it claims are Russian, whilst the Kremlin has cleverly outsourced all the offensive, nasty war crime stuff to the private army led by Yevgeny Prigozhin. It allows Putin to legitimately claim that the atrocity is not being done by the Russian army. Anyway, in the end the coup was cancelled, Prigozhin was paid off, pardoned, and he's now living out his days in Belarus, if indeed he's living at all, which is rather questionable. Certainly if I were him I'd be on the lookout for cups of tea that have a taste of polonium. Although at least all this answers the question about whether Vladimir Putin is indeed a modern day Hitler. After all, Hitler never changes opinion on Wagner. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.